Good evening. Welcome to Libertarian Counterpoint. I am James Just. With me today is John Cameron and friend of the show and <laughs> future past guest, past host, Tyler Kuski is down there at the other end. Happy to be back. <laughs> yeah, it's been a long time, Tyler. How have you been? You've been all right? Yeah, yeah, still alive. <laughs> all right. It's good, to, it's good to see you. It's good to see you. Good to talk to you. I'm sure our audience misses you. Um, but talk about missing people. Um, down in, we're going to talk education to start with. And there's a couple different uh, issues that are going on here in education as, as uh, Tyler's kind of been kicked off of social media. If you don't know, they're having like uh, troubles with teacher shortages and as it turns out, children shortages. We just found out today that on the first day of school in Los Angeles, 50,000 kids were absent on the first day of school in Los Angeles County. And so missing students, empty schools, the LA Unified School District is trying to figure out what's going on. Why are children not you know, attending school. And the, my question is, why would children go to these schools? These schools are, you know, they're not conducive places to mm. have a, for children to grow up happy and healthy adults. They're mm. just not. And John, you know, do you have a... Oh, I, I have an opinion. Yeah. You <laughs> want to talk about L.A.? or, or Yeah, the, you know, with okay. the L.A. schools. Well, it's all just kind of in general. Right. We'll get to these things. So, One of these things um, leads off the other. If, if, my point. if anybody's been paying attention to the news, they know that uh, the L.A. school district was one of the first to uh, institute mass. Uh, they, they basically didn't have any kids in school forever. The teachers got all sorts of special pay for... Uh, for working from home, uh, I think it was one of the LA school teachers that was doing his distance teaching from Costa Rica or something, um, and uh, they they got some kind of bonuses and danger pay and and were going to go out on strike if they're forced to actually go in the classroom and teach and. Um, some of the highest pay in uh, and strongest uh, contracts and best benefits in, you know, of teachers. I think the average teacher gets paid $100,000 a year in L.A. Can't yeah. fire them. And, and they have uh, abysmal uh, record teaching kids. I mean, um, and what happened during the, the uh, panic demic, as I like to call it, which is pro probably why I'm blocked on all social media, um, mm -hmm. The uh, kids who were taught at home by parents who hadn't a clue about teaching or kids who taught themselves, the unschooled, uh, did much better than kids that were forced to go into classrooms, and uh, especially the little kids. And little kids have been forced to wear masks even though uh, they rarely get sick from from uh, the fluvid. Um, or co I guess they still officially call it COVID. Yeah, they and, when they, and when they do, they don't get very sick. Yeah. And... Uh, the um, um, pediatric, uh, basically, association of the country used to have on their website that it was absolutely essential for kids to see faces and interact and learn faces. Somehow that disappeared recently, but they're claiming that once they fix the technical glitch in a couple of years, it should be back up there. So it's just why anyone would want to send their kids to school in uh, public schools in L.A. or government schools, as we like to call them, when 60 percent of the the uh, teachers who work in those government schools send their kids to private schools i i wouldn't know i wouldn't know well, i have i have not a clue why i don't know why any of those kids showed up yeah well, i agree with you schools of failure they have the most draconian lockdowns and yes these, and somehow these people are going gee why are these students not going yeah, to we're school gonna, we're why gonna are our parents to... not sending our kids to school well hello have you ever looked in the mirror and seen your past actions and are now having consequences, and you're going, gee, I don't know what happened. Mm. You would or, think that they'd have some kind of financial incentive, you know, to like want to bring the students back. Yeah. Well, <laughs> or they monkeyed the with that. They I'm not alluding to private schools or anything like that, yeah. but you know, yeah. if you, if you have a. <laughs> I think, actually, I think they get paid, uh, or they don't, they, they uh, lose pay if, if the students aren't showing up, so maybe. Well, the, well they used to. But uh, now, now uh, they did. They, they not, did. Not they, they. So that's did even some, worse now. Some, so this is if they change that. That that's, that's some shell game. So well, and we talked about it on on a show not long ago. So it's the number of they get paid based on the number of students enrolled, not the number of people who go to class. So they actually have a vested interest in not having them showed up, show up as long as they are enrolled. Yeah, so I remember. I remember being in high school and and. Um, 
you know, doing senior ditch day, and we were all excited because we knew the, knew the teachers would lose money if we if we didn't show up. <laughs> senior ditch day was one day I showed up, but, <laughs> <laughs> but it was more fun that way. <laughs> but, but it's these it's crazy. These said come school choice. My one of the arguments against school choice is that it would ruin public schools, right? Well, that's an argument for school but choice. But that's exactly. It means you're telling me that without if parents were able to choose the school, they wouldn't choose these schools. And so your solution is to force them into these schools. Mm-hmm. So you're deliberately saying that the public schools are a worse choice than other options. So we're going to prevent people from making that choice and we're going to call ourselves good because of it we're mm. going to call ourselves the good well, and people. even <laughs> even even sorry tyler even if uh, even if a voucher does pass in in california and you know the the, uh, the um gruesome newsome will will veto it if it does um you know if they get it on the ballot and it passes it's still not going to give parents all the money that they give to the to government schools they give them about half the money but even with half the money they can put their their kid in a better school than double the money in a government school. So, you know, something's rotten in in the uh, state of uh, Kafka Ornia. And uh, I bought that URL by the way. I gotta I gotta put it up online <laughs> soon. And uh, and the schools the rottenest part. Didn't mean to interrupt. You. No. So I was, uh, I'm I'm curious on what what the uh, what what the reaction is from the government side is because uh, they're gonna have the send truancy officers out there to enforce this. So. Uh, are they going to wait a while before they start finding parents or are they going to start uh, taking people's kids away? And there's, there's going to be a reaction and it's not going to be a positive reaction. You're not going to, mm. they're not going to just let this happen. They're going to do something and it's probably going to be far worse than what, what we're expecting. Well, it's because they have a history of being draconian solutions to these problems and, and stupid. So the only yeah. thing I, I could see foresee what happening right now is, is while there might be a lot of people, it's going to be kind of selective. So they'll, they'll, they'll selectively, find parents, especially uh, low-income parents, uh, that don't have enough money to afford an attorney or something that's easier target. They're going to go for the easier target parents, uh, mm-hmm. not the ones that have a little bit of money or, or have a, you know, a decent, pay a decent amount of money in property taxes. Those parents are going to be safe because the truancy officers know that they can get an attorney. It's going to be a lot harder to go through the process. I mean, if, if you look at uh, you know, how, how you know, children, when they through the foster system, it's always the low-income parents that are going to be affected. Well, and it's not just low-income. It's parents who don't know how to navigate the bureaucracy. If you know how to navigate the bureaucracy, even if you're low-income, you're fine. You know how to navigate the bureaucracy. Well, yeah, it, I'm, I'm not saying that... that uh, you can't navigate I'm the talking bureaucracy. about what, what they're targeting. So, like, they, yeah. they, they've literally have... Um, you know, the, the foster care system has literally been tar- has been found to target uh, low-income parents because usually, not always, but usually they, they have less uh, or have more trouble di- ma- navigating the bureaucracy for that reason. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And more, and more, unfortunately, uh, or one of the reasons for the poverty, uh, a lot of single head of household families, so um, they don't have the wherewithal. They don't have the experience, and they probably graduated from uh, L.A. public schools, so they they don't know how to read to fill out the forms to keep their kids. Yeah. And we're going to go back to L.A. Another problem with our L.A. public schools is there's a report in L.A. that Los Angeles is on pace to surpass a d- already disturbingly high hate crime. Now, where do these people in L.A. learn this behavior? Well, my, my question, <laughs> I, would, I would have another question. I didn't do a deep dive on this, and I wanted to, but my, my pillow called me for a little nap. I apologize, folks. Um, I want to know what they call hate crimes. Uh, yeah, how yeah, do, yeah. How do they define the finest, The finest level crimes? of McCarthyism. Yeah, and, and um, you know, does, does that mean that if, if somebody shouts out a racial epitaph as they shoot someone, it's a hate crime? Because there are people who who shout racial epitaphs and it's okay um for them to do so and and do they just say oh that's a hate crime because they said it um is it uh when black people shoot white people or when white people shoot black people when black people shoot asians when asians shoot black i mean what what's the the definition i think the general definition is typically um when you commit a crime and in an association, something uh, racial w- was said or or, or uh, showcased. So it'd be it's murder is just murder, but if it's uh, you, you said said a racial slur then murdered someone, regardless of the racial slur applied to the victim or not, then it becomes mm-hmm. a victim. I think they would classify that as a hate crime. I think that that's that's I'm not 100 percent certain, yeah. but I think well, that's a- how they after the show. I'll, uh, not tonight because my pillow's calling me already again. <laughs> um, I'll do it. I'll do a deep dive and find out how they define it. 
I'm willing to bet it's not. But you know, when uh, when when uh, both parties use hate and divisiveness, uh, well, I think one party that's supposedly the one that's against racism is basically fomenting the most racism right now. Uh, they seem to switch, you know, who's the stupidest about race? They Like every four years they trade off. Uh, when you do that and, and, the, and every single piece of lamestream media uh, mentions race, 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 race about everything, the first black woman to do, a white man did this, a Hispanic did that, an Asian did this, um, you're, you know, if you foment uh, racial hatred 24-7, Eventually, you're going to get racial hatred because not everybody's smart enough to be a libertarian, turn that stuff off, and read reason. Yeah, well, yeah. and we're going to be talking about race. We're going back up to the education in Minneapolis. The teachers are outraged because they're going to use race in determining who gets laid off or not. Hmm. Because apparently, Minneapolis is a place where they don't have to. <laughs> they're not having a teacher shortage. They're having too many teachers. Hmm. So the the contract has a layoff provision. We're the same and problem though. Kids aren't. Kids of parents have discovered that kids are better off teaching themselves or being taught by parents or in pods or private schools yeah. or all the rest of that. But yeah. in this layoff agreement with the unions, it's decided that white people get laid off first. So now it's race based. Decisions. So that's a union. That's, that's doing in the that? union contract. Is that the. It's a well, race-based decision I, they're, on layoffs. They're, wow. they're, I yeah. think this is that, this is something talk that's... Talk about irony. The union, union worked against you. <laughs> is, uh, I, I think this is a work in progress or a disaster in progress. I don't think it's, you know, everybody signed off on it. But the, the, the number I saw was like during the layoffs, 23 last time, 23% of black, 23% uh, of the layoffs were in among black teachers, even though the black teachers only represented 19% of the workforce. And because of that statistical, you know, that's probably based upon the number of layoffs of students. I'm willing to bet the population size wasn't big enough to make that. I can't imagine they laid off 500 teachers there. Let's say they laid off 50. That's not a big enough sample size to depend on those statistics anyway. So once again, we got the tech guy here who could back me up on that. I don't know what the sample size would have to be, but it'd have to be pretty pretty big to to verify that that actually did happen. And you know, just because in one instance something happened doesn't mean it's a trend. But well, and also there's if you had recently gone on a hiring a race-based hiring spree, and then you have to, because of union contracts, the last person hired is the first person laid off, well then, of course, the your racial balance and your layoffs are going to be skewed due to the people mm -hmm. who are more recently hired. Isn't all of this stuff <laughs> un completely unconstitutional and illegal? I, I know that people of California voted against all of this stuff, uh, race-based on hiring, uh, firing, contracts and all the rest of that stuff, yet these public entities keep doing it. I mean, well, it's almost like people who work in government don't don't pay well, any I mean, attention to the law. It really doesn't matter what the law is because uh, if it's not enforced, it doesn't exist. I mean, yeah. uh, a yeah. lot of these these uh, entities are able to just break the law regardless, you know, if we're not going to enforce it, you know. Well, it's, it's even not even s screw the law. I'm worried about philosophically. If you are are continually judging people based upon race, you will have nothing in the future but people judging people based upon race. Mm -hmm. You're literally setting up a condition where racism can thrive because you're setting up a system where yeah, racism is right. institutionalized. Yeah. You're literally yeah, institutionalizing It's like a, it's a pendulum swing. So you, if you, if you uh, try to uh, you, you know, fight, fight racism, you're, you're end up creating more racism mm -hmm. in the process of this. The, so only way it, to, yeah. the only way to end racism is to end racism. You can't fix racism by doing more racism to try to balance the racism that already happened. And the cool thing is, is that um, the kids, uh, well, the uncool thing is if they, if they read mainstream media and social media and go to these government-run schools, they are going to become racist. But kids like 8, 9, 10, 11, even earlier, they don't even see race. They don't see race. They don't, they don't see it. They don't have the, 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 the weight of all the baggage of the many years. You know, my father was from Kentucky. My mother was from South Carolina. Um, she used to call the Civil War the War of Northern Aggression. So you know what kind of stuff I heard at home 
And, you know, despite my, my, you know, trying to wean all that stuff out, I still see, I mean, Jesse Jackson, one of the most, one of my favorite quotes about racism, Jesse Jackson was walking in town and he heard a, a group of, of uh, young men behind him getting closer and closer and he was scared and he turned around and saw that they weren't black and he was, he said, I was ashamed of myself because I was relieved that they weren't young black men. So if Jesse Jackson can be racist about his own race, then that lets you know how pervasive that is in society. And, and continuing it with regulations and rules and quotas just makes it worse. And yeah. then you have the seething envy of and hatred of the people who are on the downside of it. Racism plus racism only gets more racism. And yeah. you know what, that's what the nanny state, when the nanny state gets involved, that's actually what you end up with more is just more nanny state. And we're going on to a blight court and I forget the city. I'm going to. Uh, I apologize. Tennessee. But ten Tennessee. In Tennessee, Tennessee Blight Court leaves victims yeah. unable to appeal decisions. That's not even really a court decision. You can lose your house because because your grass was too long, or because you didn't repair your your fence fast enough, yeah. or <laughs> whatever the heck. Or a tree things. fell on your roof. It goes and, to show you that that in the U.S. Uh, there, there's such a thing as property rights. Uh, mm -hmm. We have an illusion of property rights. Uh, we're no different in the countries that have what 99 year law or when you buy property, you only know right. own it for 99 years. We think because we don't have that 99 year exp expiration date that we somehow own it, it's no, we're no different. I mean, you, you own it until the government says, says, says otherwise. Uh, and that's whether you're, whether you're behind your taxes by $8, which I think I remember seeing uh, something the other day where someone's house was, repo was taken away by the county for $8 in mm -hmm. taxes. Uh, yeah, and it's not like they pay, take the $8 and then give you the rest of it. They mm -hmm. take all of it. Yep. All of it. It's not like they, they sell your house for four hundred grand and they take okay here's our eight dollars plus a, a grand for transaction fees and no. here's the rest of your money. No, no, no. no. They take the, all of the. They take yep. all of it. And yeah. then, then you have to go to court, to court to fight them. And who do you fight? Oh wait, it's the government court. Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And in this case, there's there's no court in Tennessee. I wish I could remember the name of the city. Yeah, but there's there, no court. It's it's a it's, it's an administrative it's, hearing. It, there's not even a, I don't even think there's a hearing. And the goalposts move, and the 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 rules are ambivalent, and all the rest of that. It sounds like a perfect life for a bureaucrat, but not so perfect if you live in this town. I mean. You know, it, I've seen, uh, remember so, the windstorm we had a while back here where a bunch of trees fell on a bunch of houses? One of my neighbors fought with his insurance company for about five months before they even started working on his roof. And it took another three months to get it done. And if we had one of these things here and they decided his house was blighted, uh, they would have uh, forced him to put his home in receivership like they do in Tennessee. If you deny the receivership, you're, you're a felon uh, and they can throw you in jail. It's just crazy what we let uh, the powers that we let be do. It's in crazy. the name of property values often is, is actually what we do. Mm -hmm. In the name of protecting property values, well, theoretical resale value is really what it is, mm -hmm. is we've given up our real property value is that it's ours. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of the things we're, we're learning is that you know it's we've given up too much. I think. I mean, what do you do? What do you do? How do you handle this situation? What's the what do you guys think the remedy is? I mean, if you're in this situation, what would be the first thing you do? Well, <laughs> if the county government's taken away. You're gonna sit there and just just roll over quietly, or, or, or I mean, I think a lot of people uh, might go a little more radical and, and bunker in. I mean, mm. Well, I think there's coming a point where that's going to happen more and more often. I think that's one of the reasons we're watching we're society. Seeing it. We, 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 don't, we don't, it's not on mainstream media, but we're seeing people bunker in and, and uh, uh, I don't want to say they're necessarily getting radicalized where they're bringing firearms into the situation, but you see people who are just, uh, they're literally uh, boarding up their windows and, and, and uh, that, that's happening all over the country. People mm -hmm. are, there's no other solution. Uh, well, I think what's, what's, uh, what's an old quote? Uh, if you're going to break the law, do it to seize power. Julius Caesar. Yeah. No, I and and I agree. I mean, you know, people are that something that we. I don't know if we have talked about this on the show. We should go at depth, but let me just throw the hook out there for a future show. You know, cops aren't required to protect you. They're not required by mm -hmm. law. There's been many court cases that say they're not required to put yep. themselves yep. 
in the line of fire. They're not required to stop a crime while it's being committed. They're not required to defend your property. They're not required to defend your life. And there's absolutely nothing you can do. This and until why, if that's it, it, changed, we're basically stuck to defending ourselves. And thank goodness we still have the right to keep and bear arms. This is why I want to bring back county militias, because then you can at least call the county militia to protect you. Yeah. Well, no, I, f if I think just by saying the word militia, you're now on another FBI list. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> mentioning Betsy Ross will put you on a, the Betsy Ross flag. Uh, well, I, 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 I've already been ba banned from Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, Oculus Rift, and TikTok for domestic terrorism. So I, yeah. I'm sure I'm on a list. I actually contacted um, one of my friends, friend, friend of a friend who works over at Facebook, um, and I uh, said, oh, yeah, I got banned from Facebook and all their, all their platforms recently. She said, oh, yeah, no problem. I run that whole department. I can get you unbanned. Like, Give me your email. She goes, looks me up. She goes, I don't know what you did, but there's a special division here at Facebook that ban you that's in, that's in charge, that's ran by the, that's, I don't want to say it's ran, I say ran by, they're not government employees, they're Facebook employees, but it's a government division that actually went and banned me. Yeah, hmm. see. So. Bad Tyler. I already know I'm on the list. <laughs> Bad Tyler. And I'm, I should be because of all the research I do for the thrillers that I write. I'm always looking up how to kill people, how to poison people, how to hack, how to create a, a new identity. Uh, I've, and I've come up with a couple of ways to, to create detonators that I've seen in no other thrillers. So I'm, I'm actually shocked that I haven't been arrested and thrown under the jail probably will be as i'm leaving the show well leaving the, <laughs> leaving the live show well we are now because tyler show. now yeah. just just popped the, the, the <laughs> yeah, and I, so i've been in seen in his company so i'm on, on the list by, now we're all in by trouble by guilt by association we're yeah. all in trouble tyler is no danger to nobody wanna, let's all I be wanna. clear about that we're talking about being dangerous to people vaping right <laughs> <laughs> now we're going. John's going to yeah. go on another I'm rant. I'm going to go off. It's <laughs> rant time, folks. If you're going to grab a beer and a pizza and you don't want to listen to a rant, this might be the time to do it. Yeah, so you vaping. got like seven minutes. So vaping proposition thirty one. I'll, I'll 39. do this in two. All right. Two, somebody said a two minute timer on me. So uh, in England, they actually do scientific inquiry. In England, uh, now their their national health is pretty bad despite what the socialists say here. You know, my mother-in-law waited for a heart valve for like a year and a knee for a year and a half. But they actually don't have anything off limits to do research on. They don't take a political decision and then not research around it or only cherry pick research that supports it. So in England, they looked at the health benefits of switching uh, from smoking to um, vaping and have already seen because they, they, they looked at it originally and said, well, we think it's 95% less harmful to vape than to smoke cigarettes. So why don't we try to get people off cigarettes and get them to vaping so the only thing they're addicted to is nicotine and they're not sucking this smoke and carcinogens into their lungs, just vape, just you know, nicotine, which is addicting, yes, but is it a vasodilator or a vasorestrictor? I should know this and I don't know it. Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah asking, I we're asking off off camera for a medical <laughs> opinion. Has psychoactive value. Yeah, if but you're depressed, perks you up. If yeah. you're anxious, calms you down. Yeah. Well, yeah, but so also, it's, I think it's either a vasodilator or vasodilator. Well, anyway, I went over my. I got all about forty seconds left. So, it's crazy to ban flavored products in a product you want young people to vape instead of smoking if you ban vaping um, then they're going to smoke and if you ban uh, making something that is less harmful more flavorful they're going to go smoke cigarettes besides that this is crazy it's already illegal to sell any of this stuff to kids anyway so you're I mean like liquor is illegal. You don't say we can't sell flavored vodka because kids will drink it. Anyway, I went over my time. I'm done. I mean, it's cra this is crazy. Vote. Uh, vote no on Prop 31. No on, yeah, no is it vote yes vote, or no? Vote, no, vote no because if the Prop 31 bans, if you vote yes, you ban vaping. You ban flavored vaping. Are you sure? So, because they yes. already got a law going. All right. Yeah, yeah. You vote no. Vote no. Vote no. You're vote positive. No. Yes. All right. Positive. All right. Vote no. Vote no. Right. Vote no, folks. Vote no. <laughs> 
vote no because probably if you vote yes, it bans flavored. And what do we know about prohibition? What happens every time we, we, we send prohibition on something? Criminals make money and more people get hooked. Well, and, and, and not only that, I mean, like, if you think about it, there's actually a profit incentive to ban this because, you know, the, organiza- the anti-smoking uh, campaigns that were started back when big tobacco used to rule the world, uh, you know, they got to have something to do. They've already won, defeated big tobacco in a sense. There's not much more damage they can do. They, they're looking for a new enemy now mm. because they have these big organizations, these infrastructures, and they got ton, millions and millions of dollars coming in of donations. They have to have a new target, and so this is their new target. You have to justify your existence, right? And, exactly. And I, hence the State Air Resources Board. They've already cleaned up the air. Now they're going to clean up air that doesn't even exist. But um, the other thing about it, I'm willing to bet if you drill down on all of these organizations, these dot .orgs running anti-vaping, that they are funded by Big Tobacco. Oh, they, they are. They, they, funded by no, Big they, Tobacco. They, 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 I'll I bet you. It's not a bet yet. Like, that has been confirmed. Like, that's yeah. not a conspiracy. Well, well they get a lot of their money from the tobacco. Even if even if it's indirectly, they get their money from tobacco yeah. taxes, yeah. right? That's the anti-smoking group. So yeah. so even if they don't get it directly from the tobacco companies, they get it indirectly through tobacco taxes. Yeah. And we got a couple minutes. Apple's laying off recruiters as part of its, its new slowdown rehiring. So, so Ty, you're in the tech industry, Tyler. Yeah, what's, so that, I, I, what's that? What's that? That's not too alarming. This is actually. I, I, uh, I'm allowed to talk about this uh, as of a few few weeks ago, but uh, uh, this is this is something that would, that I, I had saw happen or saw or anticipated uh, a few weeks ago. Or, you know, the writing was in the wall. Amazon's laying off employees. Uh, all that, what happened was all the tech companies did a huge amount of hiring, uh, and there was a bidding war. So. Uh, if you were looking for a tech job over the past couple of months, you got got in at a really high, good rate because um, they were essentially outbidding. Uh, my, my company, Intel, had hired a lot of staff uh, and paid everyone really well. Um, so you, so this is what's happening is now that they've done all the hiring, uh, now they're they're reevaluating, and uh, now you gotta gotta realize where you gotta sh- shed some money. So a lot of companies are doing layoffs. I'm happy that my company is not doing layoffs. Uh, they're just simply doing a hiring freeze, which is a smarter plan, uh, and then re- reworking everybody, putting everyone into new, new job roles. But uh, a lot of these tech companies are hiring, and, and uh, Apple looks like their their plan approach is they don't uh, just just get rid of the recruiters, and you can outsource your recruiters. Well, they are outsourced. These are these are contract recruiters that they're laying off. Yeah, they're I just going to. Yeah. I think they're taking the approach of maybe instead of laying off uh, workers, they're just going to stop hiring. Maybe doing the same things to yeah. stop hiring people yeah. and start to reevaluate. You know, yeah, well, contingent, contingent workers you are, are always first to go anyway. So yeah. I mean, uh, whenever you guys got to get rid of money, contingent workers don't show up in your layoffs. So it's it's the easiest way to. Uh, keep your stocks afloat and without telling anyone that you're letting people, letting people go. Yeah, and I remember Intel used to hire green, was it green first? Green badge. And, green and badge, and blue badge. Yeah, blue badge. And so you'd stay green for a couple of years, and one of the reasons they'd stay green was because they didn't work for Intel. So yeah. they could basically get rid of all of those contractors, and it wouldn't show up as a layoff. So absolutely right. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. and so the – the future of a tech, you know, it's not just Apple. It's the smaller tech companies that are some, you know, their their employees are going to become cheaper in the future, right? Because now you've got a bunch of, theoretically, you have more uh, tech employees looking for fewer tech jobs. Well, there's the there's also some laws uh, that are in place. Uh, um, so years ago, the, uh, so that there was an agreement between a lot of these tech companies that 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 they ha- I think it was Microsoft, Apple. I forget whether the I think my uh, forget whether the companies were involved, but there was there was a trio of companies that that basically said, don't outbid or or, or if we hire someone, don't offer them more for like six months or whatever. Uh, now that's illegal. You can't you can't have that agreement. But that was that was an actual agreement. <laughs> don't don't squint don't screech our employees. <laughs> don't what, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Don't squelch on our employees. But anyway, we are out of time. We want to thank you, gentlemen, for being here. We want to thank you for watching us. You can find us on. Uh, libertariancounterpoint.com. You can find all of our references if I ever get that site caught up. And thank you for joining us. And uh, please remember to love everybody.